Hey everyone, this time around, instead of awards, I turned to Dribble for some creative inspiration. While I was exploring, I came across this incredible animated carousal and I decided to rebuild it using JavaScript and GSAP. Now at first glance, it really seemed straightforward, but after diving deeper, I realized it posed more challenges than anticipated. I had to go through several different approaches to get it right. In today's video, I'll walk you through my process to achieve this final result. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's jump right in without further delay. As usual, we'll start by setting up a navigation menu divided into three columns, the logo, the primary links and some additional links. To make sure our page doesn't look empty, I'll also add some supplementary text and a footer. Next, we are moving on to constructing a slider container. This container will host our images, including one for the currently active slide and another for the upcoming slide. Separate from our image slider, we will add another container specifically for the slider content. This wrapper will also have two elements, one displaying the title of the active slide and the other ready to showcase the title of the next slide. With our basic structure in place, we'll later dynamically update the content using JavaScript by manipulating classes and DOM elements. But first, let's give our page some styles. We'll begin by removing the margins and paddings from all elements and setting box sizing to border box. On the body, we'll specify a font family which is going to be New Montreal. For images, we'll apply styles to ensure they utilize the full width and height of their parent container with object fit cover to maintain their aspect ratio. Next, we'll implement some standard styling for links and text. Moving on, we'll add CSS to design our navigation, the additional copy and the footer. I'll fast forward through this part since it aligns with what we have covered in previous videos and it's not the main focus of today's video. Once we have got the basic styling down, we'll tackle the slider container. Setting its position to absolute and aligning top and left to zero eliminates any unwanted space around it. We'll ensure it spans the full viewport in both width and height to cover the entire page and set overflow to hidden to prevent any unnecessary scrolling. For the active slide, we'll also opt for an absolute position to layer the next slide above it ensuring it fills the width and height of its container. Similarly, the next slide will be positioned absolutely and given full width and height, utilizing Flexbox to center its image. Then we will adjust the next slide's image with a fixed width and height adding a clip mask to initially conceal the image. The slider content requires absolute positioning too, placed at the bottom left corner with a fixed height and a clip mask for dynamic text animation. For the content of the active slide, we need it to absolutely positioned with the clip mask, enabling us to animate the text through it. The upcoming slide's content will also be positioned absolutely pushed towards the bottom a bit with the clip mask. This is because we will use this top value to animate it on interaction. 
We'll add some basic styles for the slider content, the headers. Since we will split words into letters and wrap them in span tags, we'll set their position to relative to facilitate animation using X and Y values. Finally, we'll incorporate media queries to ensure our layout looks good across smaller devices. With the styling complete, let's move on to the core of our video, the JavaScript. Before we dive into the coding part, let me outline our overall approach to bring this animation to life. We are going to add an event listener to the document which will serve as the trigger for starting our animations. Our game plan involves animating the slider by scaling up the currently active slide image in the background. Simultaneously, we will scale up the existing next slide image. Once the next slide image achieves full width and height within the slider, we'll update its class name to the active slide and remove the previous active slide from the DOM. At this juncture, We'll also introduce a new element to the slider to serve as the upcoming item and animate it using a clip mask. This technique will be key to our carousal animation. So let's get into the details. I have already set up an array containing the content for our slider. Based on whichever slide is currently active, we'll fetch the corresponding H1 tag from here. We'll start by defining some essential variables. We have current image index set to 2 and current content index to 1 indicating which images and content are currently active or in focus. The total images will help us keeping track of our carousal scope. Additionally, we introduce a flag to prevent animation overlap. Next up, I will add a small utility function which I have been using from past couple videos. Its job is to take each character of our headings and wrap them in individual span tags. Following that, we'll start by revealing the first next slide image using clip mask. We need this to animate only when the page loads first, so we won't put this inside the event listener. Next, I will add a click event listener on the document where we first check if animation is already in progress through the flag. If not, we change its value to true, signaling the start of our animation. Right after it, we apply the split text function to active sliders heading to create span elements with its letters. Then GSAP kicks in to scale the active slides image, magnifying its impact and setting a dramatic backdrop for the text animation that follows. For the text, each span, now representing individual letters, is animated to move upwards, creating a cascading effect. Simultaneously, we will prepare the next slide's content. Its text, also split into spans, is initially positioned outside the clip mask. We will then proceed with animating the next content into view. By using GSAP, we animate the next content element to move to the position of zero, making it the new focal point. Upon the completion of this animation, we will perform a cleanup by removing the previously active content from the DOM. We will animate the next content's header text, moving each letter span to a starting position of zero, sliding up into the view. Following this, the next content element officially takes over as the active content. So we will update its class from slider content next to slider content active, signifying its new role. The element's top style is reset to zero, aligning it perfectly within the viewport. Next, we increment the current content index, wrapping around the total number of images to ensure a continuous loop. Based on this updated index, we determine the text for the next content piece from our slider content array. Finally, we will create HTML block for the new slider content and append it to our slider content container.
Next, we update the current image index to cycle through our images, ensuring we have always a new slide ready after each animation cycle. With the updated index, we dynamically generate HTML for the new slide and insert it into our slider container. This new slide is prepped with an image sourced from our assets corresponding to the current image index. Right after it, we again use GSAP to animate the clip path of this new slide's image. We then focus on the newly added slide image, commanding it to expand to fill the entire viewport with GSAP, ensuring it spans 100 viewport width and height. Upon the completion of this animation, we perform a crucial cleanup step. We will identify and remove the previously active slide from the DOM. Simultaneously, we will officially transition the next slide to become the active one. This is done by updating its class from slide next to slide active, signifying its new status. To ensure our carousel can continue to cycle through the slides without interruption, we reset the flag after a brief pause. This short delay ensures all animations have conclusively finished before the user clicks again. Looks like I made some mistakes. Let's fix those typos real quick. And there we go, should be working now. I hope this video helped you out, see you in the next one.